What's up guys, Billy Wilson here. I have a very special guest for you guys today. His name is Joel Kaplan and he has a 300K per month marketing agency. Super excited to have him on here and actually got you guys to submit your questions to ask him today. So I know you guys are gonna get a huge amount of value from this and I'm super, super excited for this one. Probably my favorite interview of all time. So welcome Joel and uh, if you wouldn't mind, give us a little bit of a quick intro on your story. Billy, thank you so much for having me, man. I'm super excited to be on here and uh, we're going to draw up a lot of value. Man, in terms of my story, I can start at the end as of right now. I run not one, but two seven figure businesses. I have a digital marketing agency. We work with chiropractors and I have a coaching program called Seven Figure Agency where we help agency owners scale to seven figures and what I always love to share is that behind that success came a lot of struggle. There was a lot of uh, failure. There was a lot of, there was many challenges. There was a lot of difficulty on that journey. So whenever I share success, I always love to share the other side of the coin. So for anyone watching this right now, and uh, as you hear my interview and as I tell my story and you hear all that crazy success, I want you to know that I've been where you are. I've been through the struggles. I've been through the challenges. I've had to level up as an individual. I've had to level up as an entrepreneur. And I've had to overcome a lot of the bad side to get to the good side. And that's just something I love to share. So uh, with that in mind, that's pretty much who I am, what I do. And uh, now I'm running two seven-figure businesses. We have over 30 employees and uh that's pretty much it yeah it's honestly insane and we're gonna get into the details of all that and really get into joel's mind but the thing that has really helped me with working with joel and just learning from him has been taking my mindset not just on a 10k per month business like but not even 100k per month but even up to like the million dollars plus per month mark and really running a real business not just like a freelance agency or running a one employee agency and stuff like that, but really running a business that fully runs itself. I think the biggest thing that you guys are gonna get out of this video. So Joel, one thing I wanted to ask you is how many clients are you actually at right now with the chiropractic agency? So the Cairo agency, it got to a point where we didn't wanna keep scaling it. We were just happy with where it was at. And uh, once you're at like 250K, if you want to go to 500K a month or a million a month, your profit margins are gonna start to uh, be sacrificed. So we kind of kept it at around 250 to 300 K a month. And we have about 150 active clients right now. Nice. We, so ha we have hit the 200 mark, but we realize like if we keep scaling, that's just going to cut into our profit margins. And it kind of goes against the purpose of why we created the business in the first place, which was cash flow. Yeah. So. Makes perfect sense. And how long did it take you to start from zero to build it up to where it's at now? I'd say, I mean, we've been at the agency game since 2017, so three years. And uh, it's crazy because when I was at my nine to five, I told my business partner that if I hit 10K a month, I would quit my nine to five. And we hit 10K a month actually super quickly. We got very, very lucky. We landed our first five or six clients just like that. And I ended up quitting my nine to five. But immediately after, we were back down to like 3k a month. And, uh, since then it was kind of like a roller coaster. If you actually look at our, uh, at our growth and you see a chart of our growth over time, like that first year, it was kind of flat and it was kind of like up and down, up and down, up and down. And then all of a sudden things started to click, things started to click, things started to click. A lot of things started to come together and we scaled up like crazy. So, yeah, I totally feel that. It definitely feels like a, like, when everything comes together and clicks, it feels so good. That's probably like the, one of the best feeling moments. What do you think the hardest part was like between what revenue numbers was the hardest part for you to overcome? I always say zero to uh 10 K consistently. Obviously we hit it pretty fast, but zero to 10 K consistently where you're doing it month in month out is the hardest because at the beginning, there's so much that needs to happen for you to be able to actually go out and get crazy results. So for example, who you are as a human being, your character needs to level up 
You need to become someone that's focused. You need to be someone that's comfortable with failure. You need to be, become someone that's comfortable with rejection. You need to keep going even when things get difficult and lean into the persistence. You also need to develop a lot of skills at the beginning. You need to get good at sales. You need to get good at marketing. And a lot of people starting out, they're not very good at those things. So your skills also need to level up. And uh, I would say going from zero to 10K consistently, it was probably the hardest part of my entire journey. And what's crazy is after you go from zero to 10 and you have a foundation in place and you're getting results for yourself and things are starting to click and you have momentum, it becomes easier and easier and easier. And of course, there are still challenges. There's still failure. There's still uncertainty, but you have so much more momentum to carry you forward. I don't know if you've heard Elon Musk talk about this, but getting the rocket ship to go from being on the ground to 10 feet off the ground is exponentially harder than getting it to go from 10 feet off the ground up into uh, miles and miles and miles in the atmosphere. And uh, I think that was probably the hardest part. Like at the beginning, I almost quit three times. At one point, I even filled out a job application and I applied for a job here in Denver, Colorado. And uh, it's crazy looking back because I'm so grateful I didn't get that job Otherwise, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't have two seven-figure businesses. I wouldn't have hundreds of clients. And I wouldn't be the human being an entrepreneur that I am today. So, Yep, exactly. I think that's always... I think it's mainly just the knowledge because once you have it, you can go ahead and do it again. But it's gaining that initial knowledge where it really starts to go up and down. But then when everything does click together and you finally really like, finally understand all the parts together, that's when it really starts to grow. Like, so. Totally like at that. the beginning, there's so much information. There's so much, there's so many avenues that you can take, so many business models that you can choose. So you really need to level up who you are and become, become an individual that is extremely focused, that is extremely connected to one vision, one path, one business model. And you also need to get really good at skills you've probably never tapped into before, like sales, like marketing. And you also have to be willing to deal with all the emotions that come from that roller coaster ride at the beginning. And I think that's why it's probably the hardest part of the journey. Like at this point, when I coach clients that have their agencies at 10K a month or 20K a month, it's so much easier to help them hit 50K a month or 100K a month versus a student that's just starting out and they have zero clients, zero experience, zero sales skills. They're all over the place. They have shiny object syndrome. It's so much harder to help that person hit 10K a month. So, yeah. But I mean, when you think about it, though, if, as long as you can do it faster than four years to get to that 10K per month mark, it's still a more efficient process than going to college or something like that. I mean, people can spend oh, for sure. like four to 10, 12 years learning how to do their job. So, I mean, it takes time to learn how to do what you want to do. For sure. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs have a false expectation in, real, in, in regards to how long it actually takes to see results. And they don't see the context behind the people that did have quick results. For example, Sergio, my business partner, he has an agency that does multiple seven figures. And he's one of the head coaches in seven figure agency. But what you don't know about him is that he's been in sales since he was like 15, he started these little businesses in high school and was practicing the art of sales and having some sort of value exchange with a potential customer since he was 15. And he has at this point over 10 years of sales experience. So even if he started his agency three years ago, the reality is that he's been in the business world for a much longer period of time. And a lot of people don't see these things and they expect the results to happen super quickly. But like you said, um, no matter what, even if it takes a while, if it's what you want to do, it's worth it. I just think that people need to have the right expectations in regards to how long it actually takes. Yep. hundred you know? percent. 
So the main question I want to ask you that probably was the most commonly asked question by everyone was, if you had to completely restart from scratch with little to no money, what would you do? Great question. First things first, I would become much more reactive rather than proactive. So I think a lot of people, especially starting out, are trying to solve problems eight, nine, and 10. And I would do whatever it takes to take the first step forward and only focus all my energy on that. That's first things first. Second uh, point, I would focus 80% or more of my time on setting and closing appointments. I think everyone's freaking out, worried about how to get clients results, especially when they're just starting out before even having a client. So I would really focus on taking things one step at a time and only focusing on that next step forward, which for most beginners is setting and closing appointments. So if I had to start from scratch, I'd be much more reactive rather than proactive. I would focus my energy on setting and closing appointments. And then I would go after one niche and commit to that business model. So in this case, SMMA or marketing agency for at least six months. And that would prevent me from pivoting and going off and having shiny objects, object syndrome and focusing on something that may seem easier from uh, the outside, but in reality is going to be just as hard. So assuming those three things are in place and I've got my mindset right, I'm focused not only on one thing for long enough to actually reap the rewards, but also focused on the right actions. The next thing that I would do to get my uh, first few clients is scrape a list of emails and phone numbers of every single person in my niche. So for example, if I'm working with dentists, I would go on something like D7 or Lead Kahuna or Local Scraper, use their software to get a whole list of emails and phone numbers. And if you want to hire someone to scrape it for you, that also works. If you have some money personally, if I had 125 bucks, I would just go hire someone to scrape the entire database for me. Once I have the list of emails and phone numbers, I would focus, I would be focused on setting up one free channel of getting appointments and one paid channel of getting appointments. So I would launch, uh, for example, something like Instagram DMS or cold email outreach or LinkedIn outreach. I would pick one strategy that's free to get appointments. And then I would also launch paid ads and I would start with lead forms. That's what I recommend just because that way you don't have to focus on building a whole funnel. And all you have to worry about is getting the ad to convert. And I would actually run ads to that list. So I would upload those emails and phone numbers to Facebook as a custom audience. And I would run ads directly to that list with lead forms. Besides that, um, besides that, once it's time to actually close the deal, everyone's always like, yo, Joel, what should I price my services at? I would probably start anywhere between a thousand to two thousand dollars per month, not including ad spend. But the big thing that I would do if I was starting out is make it easy, very, very, very easy for people to say yes to me and start doing business with me. What that looks like is negotiating and lowering the price if it means getting them in the door. For example, if someone's like, no, I don't want to do this, but if you lowered the price, I'd be uh, open to thinking about it. I would literally let them in for 500 or or $1,000 a month for the first one or two months, and then it just goes back up to the normal price. Another thing that I would do if I was just starting out is offer 72-hour free trials to any leads that don't close on my one to $2,000 a month packages. Because again, the hardest part is to go from zero to one and get that momentum going. It's as if we're, there's a huge stone out there and we're trying to move the stone, but it's so hard to move because it's so heavy at the beginning. But finally, once we get it rolling, then it starts to get easier and easier and easier. Now the stone is starting to move and move and move and move. And now the stone is moving fast and you can let go. But at the beginning, it requires so much more force, so much more energy. And most people don't have any momentum. So at the beginning, I would be focused on getting momentum. That means offering 
discounted first month. That means negotiating to lower the price if that means getting them to say yes to me. That means even going down and doing 72-hour free trials if they don't want to work with me even at $500 a first month. And the whole idea is that now I'm building case studies, um, having potential clients, um, building social proof so that after five of these, I can go out and actually get a high paying client at the regular price. Besides that, the last little hack that I would do is try to find a strategic partner. And I would tell the strategic partner, Hey, let me run your ads for free, a hundred percent for free for the next year. In exchange, I need you to be my case study. I need you to be my main, uh, piece of social proof. I need you to record a testimonial video for me. And I need you to be a backup closer in case I can't close anyone so that I can send them to you. And hopefully after speaking with you, they come back and close. Because at the beginning, again, the hardest part is you have no momentum. So if I had to start from scratch, all I'm thinking about is how can I build momentum? And by having a strategic partner. So for example, if you work with gyms and you get a gym owner that's really successful and you do a trade where you run all of their ads for free, but in exchange, they speak to all of your prospects, your closing rate is going to go up immediately. So those are some of the things that I would focus on. Yep. Super valuable. I definitely think one of the hardest things for beginners is focus. That's definitely the thing I struggled with the most. One, just focusing on one niche, focusing on one industry, not jumping around. There's so many things that has to do with focus. And then also um, working on the right things in the right order. I see that mistake so many times, like people are trying to do something that's like they can do when they have 10 clients, but they don't even have any clients right now. So it doesn't make any sense to do it. Like exactly like working, figuring, figuring out the results before you even have a client. I mean, there's some things that you can change up, but another thing I noticed you said, Joel was um, to clear this up. I think you said reactive versus proactive. Um, did you mean pro be proactive and not reactive? Or did you mean that the same way that you said? No, I meant you, you should actually be much more reactive. So for example, take a step forward, fail, then learn from that mistake and go back and take more action. So have you heard of that book or that, uh, philosophy called ready, fire, aim? I don't know if you've heard about that, but I've maybe heard about it a little bit. Well, the idea is like, uh, ready, fire, and then you aim again. I think most people when they're starting out are so afraid of taking action. They're so afraid of taking the first step forward. So instead of worrying about the future and thinking long-term and being proactive, you actually need to just go out, go out, go out, go out, go out, out, fire, 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 then look up and aim and be like, where am I pointing to the problem? with most beginners is not that they don't have the right strategies. It's not that they don't have the right tactics. Cold email is not that complicated. Doing DM outreach is not that complicated. Even setting up ads is not that complicated. What's hard for most beginners starting out is the mindset required to actually go out and succeed. So for example, instead of sending the messages, they'll just spend 10 hours learning all day which is a proactive activity. They're thinking, they're just learning how to run Facebook ads for their clients and learning how to improve fulfillment because eventually it will become valuable. It's a very proactive activity rather than being like, you know what, let me just send 50 messages, see what happens, even if it's totally off. So yeah, I know, I know that maybe threw you off a little bit, but yeah, I think when, if you're just starting out, you actually need to just take a lot of action and fail quickly and get through that initial period of failure, which is inevitable if you're trying to achieve success and get through that period as fast as possible. And the only way, the, the fastest way to do that is by being reactive and just taking action, 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 then reacting to the data from all the action that you took, then reevaluating. The problem is everyone is evaluating and thinking and game planning and they never end up taking action. 
You see what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Like I've seen people setting up a pipe drive when they don't even have a single lead yet. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Correct. So we're building a website and it's like, I remember I spent a week, Billy, building a website for, uh, it was called Atlas Rock Climbing. So we were going to start a uh, marketing agency for rock climbing gyms. We spent a whole week building a website and we didn't have a client. We didn't send any outreach. At the end of the week, we wasted an entire week doing a proactive activity, building a website, which in the long run is going to be really, really important. But in the short run, it really does not matter. And we just need to go out there, get some shots up, fail, then come back, analyze the action that we took and figure out how do we how we need to pivot to get closer to a sale. Yep, huge mindset shift and just helps you in life overall. I think that's the most fun thing about this journey is not like just the money, but just becoming a better person. Um, Yo, Billy, can I say one more thing that yeah, I just of thought about? Say anything you want. For anyone that's just starting out, the other thing that I would recommend is to practice. So if you look at any professional sport in the world, even when people are at the highest caliber, they're the best of the best in their field, what do they do every day? They still go to the gym or go to the court and practice. Some even practice Monday through Sunday, seven days a week. In entrepreneurship, I don't know why, but a lot of people, especially starting out, ignore the fact that to get better at something, you got to get the reps in, you gotta practice. So if I was starting out, one of the things that, that I would actually do is try to form a little practice team with a few other entrepreneurs and practice sales, which is the most important skill right at the very beginning to get a client. I would practice every single day, Monday through Friday. And what's crazy is if you actually look at all the eight and nine figure companies that have massive sales teams, what do they do every day? They do a daily sales training every single day, Monday through Friday, an hour a day. But when we're beginners, I don't know why we ignore this fact and we think we don't even think about it, but I'm telling you, if I could go back in time and I had just set an hour a day to practice, to role play, go through objections, practice my sales script, we would have closed way more clients, way more quickly. So quick little golden nugget. Thank you, man. This is great. Um, so I think one of the biggest challenges for people is like overcoming that their current situation, like self image. So how did you manage to change your, your mindset and your self image to set you up for success? That's a great, great, great question. First things first, you have to solve that problem the same way that you would build mus your muscles at the gym. Like it takes time. You don't just go to the gym one day and all of a sudden you're huge. It doesn't happen. It's something that requires a lot of time, energy, focus, commitment, dedication, and it's not going to happen overnight. So if you're watching this and you're like, well, I read this mindset book, but my mindset still sucks. It's just the same as going to the gym. If you go one day or even one week or even one month, you're not all of a sudden going to get strong and big and fast. So first things first, I would have that expectation reset that it's a never ending journey to work on your self-confidence on your self image. Like you said, that's the first thing. The second thing that I would do, which is huge if I really want to improve my self-worth is I want to become a person, the type of person that says they're going to do something and actually follows through and does it most of the time. Obviously, sometimes life gets in the way and I'm not expecting perfection, but I see a lot of beginners, especially beginners say, yo, I'm going to hit 100K a month next month. And it's like, that's impossible. Like you just started out. So what happens is now you're essentially telling yourself that you're not the type of person that says they're going to do something and actually does it. So now you begin to subconsciously lose trust in yourself and your self-image goes down. 
So one of the greatest hacks to building quick self-confidence and really compounding that self-confidence over time is to set micro goals that you know you can confidently hit about 75% of the time and stack them. So for example, if you have a weekly target of the total number of appointments you want to get or total number of clients you want to get, you should be hitting that weekly target three out of every four weeks. And what's going to happen is you're going to start telling yourself the story, hey, I, this is easy. I can hit these goals. I'm confident in myself. Or for example, let's say that your goal is I'm going to make, I'm going to send 50 DMs today. If you actually never do it, then you're essentially telling your subconscious brain that, or subconscious mind, that you can't trust yourself. But if you're the type that says they're going to do something and follows through, that's going to be huge in terms of building the self-image. And I'd say the last thing, Billy, is the basics, man. You want to work on self-confidence, get good sleep, eat well, work out, read, educate yourself, improve your skills. It's kind of like an all-encompassing commitment to leveling up. It's not like a one answer fits all, you know? So those are some things that come to mind. Yeah, it really is. It really is just getting everything together and just leveling up as a person overall. So and again, knowing that it takes time too. Yeah. It's like, again, it's like a muscle. Like I'm still leveling up. You're still leveling up. It's not like you, it's not like you get there and you're done. Yeah, exactly. So what would you say is kind of like the main outline to scaling and then automating an agency? Like what are like the main couple steps, like the main key steps that you're going to take in, in that process? Like, let's say if you can narrow down going from zero to 300K per month and automate an agency, what would be like the main steps that someone's going to take to do that? It's a great question. I think the best thing that I could do is break down the traits behind a 300K a month agency. I think that's probably going to be the most valuable way to answer the question. So if you're at 300K a month, first things first, you have a proven way to do one to many prospecting. So any agency or really any business that's doing that sort of volume has a way of getting clients at scale. And they've evolved from doing prospecting one-to-one, -one, like going to networking events, cold calling, sending messages themselves to either having a team in place that's doing all this work or running paid ads. So they're essentially reaching a lot of people at scale or maybe strategic partnerships, things like that where you're getting in front of a lot of people at once. That's one thing. If you want to scale the 300K a month, you absolutely must be doing one-to-many prospecting. Number two, I don't know of many 300K a month agencies that are not running paid ads. So at least local lead gen e-com agencies, most of them, for the most part, are running paid ads. So to go from zero to 300K, paid ads is going to be a part of that formula so that you can essentially control how many appointments you're getting and therefore control how many clients you ultimately end up closing. To get to 300K a month, you obviously need to have amazing systems and a team in place. I think a lot of people starting out, they want to do everything. They want to do the sales because that's kind of what we know. That's kind of what we were taught. When you had a job and you were at a nine to five, you did the work. You didn't delegate it out. You didn't ask yourself, how can I fire myself for my job? You just did the work. So one of the big shifts that people need to make to go from zero to 300K is they need to stop thinking as an entrepreneurial employee of their own business and shift into a CEO. And the only way to do that is by getting a team in place and having amazing systems because with systems and by having a team in place, you can make that transition where you're no longer the bottleneck. You're no longer doing the work. And one thing that I'll also speak on is whenever we're growing businesses, there's always a bottleneck. So the question is how 
how do we create space so that there is no bottleneck? And then therefore that space that's now been created allows for the growth to happen. So I'll give you an example within my coaching program, seven figure agency. I even told my team, I was like, guys, I want you all to fire yourselves from your jobs and figure out a way to automate it or delegate it. And we can hire more people because if you guys have more time and you can work on bigger things and you can essentially level up your role, then we're going to level up as a company. So to go from zero to 300 K, you also have to always be figuring out how to create more space for that growth. For the most part, that comes down to, again, evolving from an entrepreneurial employee into a CEO, systems, having a team in place. And it also comes down to you letting go. I see, I see this all the time where the CEO of the agency is the biggest bottleneck because they're the ones, they don't want to let go of the sales calls. But you don't realize is, let's say you're getting 30 sales calls a week and you hire two salespeople and now you don't, you step off, you can literally double the amount of opportunities instantly just by adding two sales reps. Now they can take 60 calls instead of 30. And now you have the time to work on bigger and better things like product innovation. So sorry, am I, am I ranting too much? Billy? <laughs> no, people, I want to hear your thoughts. This interview is not about me. It's about you and getting, you're really helping out a lot. So I really, really like your answers and like you were going on. So it's a good thing. Um, oh, one thing to touch on about that <laughs> like though ranting. is um, like, how do you decide when is the right time to delegate something? Uh, are you delegating out of, um, let's call it scarcity, or are you delegating out of abundance? So for example, delegating out of scarcity would be, hmm, I'm not good at sales. I don't, I, 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 I'm, I fear that if I commit to sales and it doesn't work out, it's all going to fall apart. So let me just go find a salesperson that's better than me. Or actually, let's change it. It's called, let's call it delegating out of fear. If you're delegating out of fear and out of wanting to commit to leveling up and out of wanting to commit to the process of what it takes to actually scale, then you're delegating at the wrong time. But if you're delegating, let's call it out of opportunity, then it's the right time to delegate. If you're like, hmm, I can close the deals, but you know what? There's going to be more opportunity if I pass that off and I focus on bigger and better things. So for example, I don't know if you've seen like done for you agency offers or done for you Amazon offers where people are like, yo, I'm going to hire a sales team. I'm going to do everything for you. Those people aren't ready to delegate because they're delegating out of their own fear of not succeeding on their own and doing it themselves. However, if they're really talented and they know sales and they know how to get appointments and they know how to get clients results and they're delegating out of the bigger and better opportunity that they'll have by freeing their time, then I would say it's a much better time to delegate. So the biggest example I see in this is beginners are not good at sales. And instead of committing to the process and getting good at sales, they try to solve the problem by putting a bandaid on the wound and trying to hire a salesperson. There's actually someone that comes to mind. I'm not going to say names that I've literally seen this guy post over and over again. I want to hire like in groups, trying to hire a salesperson, trying to hire a salesperson, trying to hire a salesperson. It's been a year and he's still at it. And the real solution is him not finding a salesperson, it's him leveling up, getting good at sales first, owning the process, going through that growth, and then delegating because he no longer can handle it. Because he, he's literally closing too many deals. He doesn't have enough time and he has to pass it off. Yep. So agreed. Mistake that I made at the beginning. I had one of my friends do sales just because I thought he would be good, but I didn't realize it was a skill, not just a trait anyone could have. And I... I'm a huge introvert, so sales is never really my favorite thing. But I learned how to do it anyways and got through it. And you really do need to just push through it and just become a better person. That's the real answer. 
one thing I wanted to say um, as we wrap up here is one thing that Joel really helped me do was open my mind up to realize there's a lot to owning like a 10K per month agency. A lot of people, I think, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be people watching this with a 10K per month agency. There's probably going to be people watching this with like a 100K per month agency. And then there's going to be people watching this with like a zero or like one to 5K per month agency. And what I want to say to those people on the smaller end, and even on the bigger end too, this goes for everyone, is I want you to open up your mind to look further into the future. Like if you get to 10K, mm. like where are you going to go after that? Because that's not something I was personally thinking about. I was just at the beginning, I was just focused on get to 10K, get to 10K, get to 10K. But I didn't think about beyond that. And the fastest way to get to 10K is different than the fastest way to get to 300K. And I almost had to like redo my entire mind and my entire business to figure out how to get there. So I would encourage you guys to think ahead further, like three to five years in the future rather than six to 12 months in the future. And um, really think about not just like getting to 10K, but also thinking in the future, like how can I grow a real business and really become a better person and thinking what you want even further in the future will end up saving you probably a few years of your time. What do you think on that, Joel? I love it. And I think it goes to, you said that you had to really change to get to the next level. I tell people all the time, stop asking, how do I get to 10 K or how do I get to 300 K a month and start asking who do I need to become as an individual and who do I need to become, who do we need to become as a team? Once you have a team to get to the next level, because first you need to shift your identity before you can actually go out into the world and execute the strategies, the tactics that are required to get to that next level. For example, let's say I said, yo, Billy, here's how you're going to set appointments and close appointments and you're going to get to 50 clients. Well, if you're not the type of person that can trust and let go and delegate to your team and you haven't developed that identity, then once you get to 50 clients, it's going to be pure chaos and it's going to come crashing down. But if you've become the type of person and embodied the identity of someone who delegates, trusts their team and has let go, then once you get to 50 clients, it's sustainable and it'll continue growing. So hundred percent, man, I think a lot of people, it's not, it's not that asking how do I get to 10 K a month is a bad question. It's just not the best question, or at least the, it shouldn't be the first question that you ask. You should first ask, who do I need to become? And then you should ask, okay, now that I've gotten clarity on who that, what identity I need to have to get to that level, how do I get there? So exactly. And, um, if you guys found this interview valuable in any way, which I can pretty much guarantee you have, if you watched this far, uh, you can only imagine like how much Joel has been able to teach me over this last like two, three months. It's honestly changed my life. And if you guys don't know this already, I think Joel mentioned at the beginning, but he does have a program called seven figure agency. It's funny cause mine's called six figure agency. So it kind of matches well. Um, but really it's honestly the best coaching program that I've ever seen. I was honestly extremely impressed. They have a daily call every single day of the week, like, like a group call where you can literally talk to Joel, talk to his main sales guy, Sergio, like he was saying, talk to his ads guy. Like it's insane. I've never seen a coaching program like it before. And it's really helped me turn, turn myself into not just somebody with the 10, 20 K, per month agency with like one person working with me, but really building a business that fully runs itself and having a team member for each task and really building something that can actually scale to a much larger portion. Like for example, I've gotten paid up set, paid ads set up thanks to his program. And we're now getting consistently two car dealership clients per week, charging wow. them $3,000. And I get two clients per week and this continues till the end of this year, I'll be at hundred K per month. and well on my way to 300K per month very soon after that. So Joel, your program has been extremely helpful to me. And if you guys are interested in it at all, I'm gonna put a link down below this program. Um, and maybe there'll be even a little short video for me. Um, I highly recommend you guys check it out because it's really helped me change my life a lot. And a lot of the students that have been in the six figure agency program already have actually gone on to that program after they hit six figures. And it's been super awesome to see them grow. Like another student, for example, is Jared Curry. 
He's 18 years old. I did an interview on my channel a few weeks ago, or maybe a few months ago, and he's now scaled to past 50K per month. So he, six figure agency helped him get him to six figures, and then seven figure agencies help, now helps him get to 50K plus. So it's awesome. Thank you so much, Joel, for taking the time for this interview. People are going to absolutely love this. So thank you guys for watching. If you like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe. Joel, is there somewhere they can follow you at? You guys want more info? What I would say is definitely check the link below that Billy's going to drop. Besides that, you can check me at uh, on Instagram at official Joel Kaplan, official Joel Kaplan, J O E L K P L A N. Uh, we also have a free Facebook group called Marketing Agency Secrets. But uh, honestly, Billy, thank you so much, man. Uh, this was a blast. Super grateful for you. I know for a fact uh, you're going to hit 100K a month. It's not a matter of if, but when. And uh, that's pretty much it. Awesome. Thank you, man. Thank you, guys. And make sure you leave a lot of likes and comments on this video because maybe I yes. can get Joel to do another one if it does really well. So make sure you guys give it as much love as possible. And if you get course, 100 likes, I'll do round two. And we could even <laughs> we could even do like a more intimate Q&A or like a Zoom call with people watching. I don't know. We could figure something out. But yeah, let's get okay. a lot of likes. <laughs> awesome. And then one last reminder, check the link down below to learn more about Joel's program. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. And thank you, Joel. See you guys.